Hey Forge members, Anthony here, and welcome to the fourth video, I believe, the fourth video in our React series. What we are going to be doing today is we're going to see exactly how to pass in a function as a prop so that your child component can call it. And the way we're going to do that is by taking our web app that we've created so far. So as you can see, um, it has a little dummy counter here from the second tutorial, and it has this sort of employee directory from the third tutorial. And what we're going to do is we're going to create functionality to select a employee of the month. Um, so all we're going to do is we're going to take our web app. Each person is going to have a button under them that says select as employee of the month. And when you select that, it will highlight the whole background around them as yellow to denote that they are the employee of the month. So the first thing I want to do is let's go back into our code. So this is the same code as uh, from the last video. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to clean this up a bit. So I want to take this employees array and I actually want to create it somewhere else and then pass it in uh, to this variable just so it's easier to read. So I'm going to create a const. I'm going to call it employee directory. And that is going to be equal to the same list structure. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut all of this stuff, paste it in here. And I'm going to say employees is just equal uh, to the employee directory variable that we have. Now, the second thing I want to do is I want to give every single one of these employees a unique employee ID. Um, and we're going to need that for later. You'll see why. But I'll just create an ID variable and I'll, you know, give Bob the ID of one. Uh, we can give Stephanie the ID of two. Oops. And we'll give Jim an ID of three. So now that all our employees have an ID, I want to touch on something that I might have left out in the last video. So a good way to test uh, your React code, um, let's say to make sure data is displaying properly, is by using console.log. So if I were to console.log, let's say for example in our employees map, I could console.log, let's say uh, the entire employee object. So now if I come over here and I refresh the page, I can actually inspect elements and the uh, the console.log will show up here. So one of the things I missed on in the last video is this whole idea, uh, this warning that React is giving us. So any warning or error that React will give you will usually show up, um, as long as it's not a compilation error, will usually show up in the console log. And here it's saying that each child in a list should have a unique key prop. What that means is when we are mapping through our employees list, we are pretty much attributing this profile component over and over and over again, uh, but each one needs to have, according to the React standards, a key, a unique identifier that sets it apart from all the other profile components. Uh, and now that we have an employee ID, we can set the key equal to the actual employee dot ID. And now you, if, you were, if we were to save this, we would see that that error is now gone. And this console.log is showing this entire, um, is showing the entire object for every single employee that we've for each through. So we can go ahead and delete that. But it's very useful to know how to use uh, console log. So now what we want to do, we can also pass in the ID as a prop. Uh, just so it's less confusing, we're not constantly using a key when we're in the profile component. Um, so let's pa pass in the employee ID as an additional prop um, under the I name ID. So now that we have this, let's think a bit of how we want uh, to do this whole selection of employee of the month. What we can do is we can actually do it from uh, this component itself. So for example, let's say I wanted to make the background around them yellow if they're an employee of the month. The way we can do that is using what is called inline styles. So there are a lot of different ways to style your, there are a lot of different ways to style your React app. Um, there's inline styling, there's uh, CSS components, there's a lot of different ways. Uh, but the simplest way and the fastest way if you're working on something light or you just need a, a small amount of styling is through what we call inline styles. So I've gone ahead and I've wrapped this profile component around with a, uh, a, a div tag. And what I want to do is I want to set the background color of this div to yellow. So if we come here and we expect element, 
we can actually see that here is the div that is around each component. So if I were to take this component and add a style to it in the browser, and I said, you know, background uh, color is equal to red, we could see here that the background color is equal to red. Red's really ugly in this scenario, so let's just set it to yellow. So we pretty much want to find a way to do that, but within our React code, without necessarily, for now, creating a CSS file. Um, although it is best practice to uh, create a CSS file. So what we can do here for embedding styles is we can type style is equal to, and then we create double squiggly brackets, and pretty much we give whatever the attribute's name is, um, but we do it in camel case. So in this situation, um, the thing we are trying to change is the background color. So you saw when we did it in regular CSS here, it was background dash color. However, in order to do it in React in this JSX, what we actually do is we convert this to camel case. So we take any dashes and we delete them and anything that came after the dash, any word that came after the dash, we capitalize the first letter. So in this case, it would be background color just like this, instead of, instead of what we had before, which was background dash color. And then what we do is we put a colon and just set it equal to what we want it to be. So now if I go back to our React app, everything should be highlighted in yellow. All the, um, yes, yeah, so all the uh, profile components should be highlighted in yellow. But what we want is just for the employee of the month to be highlighted in yellow. So the first thing we have to do is we should keep track of who the employee of the month is. So we can do that by setting a state variable for it. So I can say employee of the month, oops, <laughs> of the month, and that will be equal to the employee's ID. So remember, in our constructor, when we are first setting the state, what is happening is we are setting the default value for all these variables inside of here. So if no, I want the default value for the employee of the month to be zero, aka no employee will be the employee of the month until we have decided that they will be. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to create that and we're going to set that equal to zero. Now we can also create a function that will take in an employee ID and set that employee ID as the employee of the month. So what we can do is say set employee of the month. We can pass in a variable called employee, employee ID. And all we're going to do is we can say this dot set state. Um, this dot set state employee of the month is is going to be just this parameter employee ID. So now if we ever call this function and we pass in an employee ID parameter, it will set the employee of the month variable that we have in our state equal to whatever the employee ID is. Now let's move on to how to actually render that in. So the cool part about React is you can also have uh, what we call um, conditional statements inside of it. It, it. And you're probably familiar with that. It, it's just an if statement. Uh, so since this is in a JavaScript for each loop or a map, what we can just do is we can say if, so we can say if the employee, the employee ID of this employee object, so the ID attribute of this employee object is equal is equal to this dot state dot employee of the month. So pretty much if the employee that we are currently on is the employee of the month, we can return this. Uh, we can return um, let's see here, all the way up to right here. We will return this snippet of code. And this snippet of code includes uh, the styling in the background. Includes the styling in the background, the, the yellow style. So then what we can do here is we can say else. So if they are not the employee of the month, we can just return it without the background styling. So we can just delete this div overall. And what you'll see if I save this, there should be absolutely uh, no one highlighted because no one is the employee of the month. Now let's say I set the default employee of the month to one. What that's gonna mean is Bob is going to be by default the employee of the month, lucky guy. And if we were to save this, only Bob would be highlighted because Bob is the only person who's 
ID is equal to this um, state variable employee of the month. So this is what is known as conditional rendering. Now, let's say what we want to do now is um, let's actually clean this up a bit. So you can see here we have a bit of redundancy with the uh, profile. We're calling the profile um, component multiple times. So what we can do here is actually get rid of this whole if statement structure and create what is known as a ternary statement. So let me show you what that means. So let's get rid of all the code we just added here. If you're following along, I apologize. Um, okay, so we are back to just having every single employee's background being set to yellow. Now, what we can do here is we can go back into our code, and within this style statement, uh, we can create a ternary statement. Now, a ternary statement, um, if you haven't used one before, it's pretty much just a sort of way to make an if-else uh, statement in a bit less syntax. So we can say in in our style over here, we can say background color is equal to, or background color colon, and then we do the check. So is employee.id equal to this.state.employee of the month? And then we have two things. So we put a question mark and a colon. Now, anything that is after the question mark will be if the statement is true. And anything that comes after the colon will be how to handle the if how to handle the case if the statement is false. So if the statement is true, if the employee if the ID of the employee is equal to the employee of the month, we are going to set that background color to yellow. And if it is not, we are just going to keep it as white. So now we can go back to our app and we'll see Bob once again is the only one who is highlighted because he is the only person uh, that has an ID that matches the employee of the month, which is one. And if we were to change this to two, it would be the same thing for Stephanie. So that's just a cool little trick uh, to use. You can embed these ternary statements in a lot more places than just styles, but we'll get to that in future videos as well. Now it's time to make this uh, functional. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a button here. Let's say um, we're gonna have a button and we'll call we'll we'll say set um, set and then uh, this dot props dot name as employee of the month. So this will just be a button that we can click. So for example, set Bob as the employee of the month, set Stephanie as the employee of the month, set Jim as the employee of the month, and you'll notice it doesn't do anything um, quite yet. So let's also put our um, our employee of the month variable back to zero. So nobody starts as the employee of the month. Nobody gets a cheat. Um, now what we can do here is we created this function earlier that when called, will set the employee of the month to someone's employee ID. We want that function to run whenever we click this button, set employee of the month. But you'll notice that this button is within our app component and, or sorry, this function is within the app component and the button is within the profile component. So how do we get this button to call this function? Well, we can use what is called a, a callback as a prop. So we can actually pass that function in as a prop to our child. So we can say, uh, we can copy the name, we can say um, set employee of the month is equal to this dot set employee of the month. We are passing in this function as a prop. Now in our profile, what we can do here is let's create a function to handle the on click. So let's say handle set employee of the month. Okay. And we'll make this a nice arrow function. And what we'll do is we can call uh, this.props.setEmployee of the month, the function that we passed in as a prop. And in the parameter, we can just pass in the employee's ID, which we are also passing in as a prop. So this, oops, so where were we here? And the, the parameter, you can see here in the function we take in the employee ID, this.props.id. Now, the last thing we pretty much have to worry about is making sure that whenever this button is clicked, it calls this set employee of the month function. So we can just have an onClick event handler. So onClick is equal to this.handle set employee of the month. Now, if we save this, let's see if this will work. 
So we can come over here and click set Bob as employee of the month. And there we go. It sets Bob's employee ID, which is one, to be the employee of the month ID. And it highlights it in yellow as per our ternary statement. Now we can test it with Stephanie and Jim as well. Now it's important to note, while this is good to know how to pass a function in as a prop, um, you'll see it being used less and less in production level React apps. And the reason for that is because once you start using tools like Redux and Context, uh, the need for this is less. And you could actually have some really messy React code. If you want an example, or if you want uh, to know, for example, one of the reasons why, just imagine an application that maybe has a child component within a child component within a child component. So let's say you have uh, three nested components. So actually, let me see if I can open up paint and actually uh, draw this right now. So let's say we have a component here and within that component, we have another component and within that component, we have like another component. Let's say there was a button in this inner component that we wanted to click, and when we clicked that, we wanted to call a method in this outermost component. Well, we would need a callback function. Uh, we would need to pass the uh, the uh, method from this component into this one, and then again into this one. And you can imagine things get really messy. Messy. For example, what if we also had another component here, and within this component right here, we wanted to call a function that was in this component. Well, you would have to pass the component from here into the outer div and into here, and then into this component. So it, it can get, things can get really messy um, when you're just working with callbacks like this. And the solution to this uh, is actually uh, something called Redux, which is sort of a really, really, really huge uh, library that is built on top of React, um, that can be used on top of React, that simplifies a lot of things with what is called a context store. But don't worry about any of that for now. We will get to those videos in the future. Um, I just wanted to illustrate um, this whole callback functionality just so it's something that you had reference to and it's something you knew. And in addition to that, we also learned how to use ternary statements and conditional statements within React as well as how to do inline stylings. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.